Welcome to my studio. Come on in. Right here, you're going to be walking right into the reception area. Usually there's uh, 20 or 30 people here, sometimes 10, 15, 5. I did a family of 16 the other day. Uh, these are cabinets are kind of like the cabinets of like my travels. I just got back from China and there's uh, Chairman Mao over there. And here's uh, my first camera. Uh, and my father gave me this, this is the Brownie Hawkeye. And then all these little glasses I use in some of my props and stuff like that. This is where my secretary sits. Uh, Valerie, she's not here right now, but she should be here soon. Uh, these are uh, from Marshall Fields. These were stooping glass doors. Um, I, I made a trade with them. I used to be a photographer for them. I'm kind of like Mr. Barter. I try to uh, do different things with different things. Uh, some uh, artwork. I collect a lot of artwork. There's some uh, mud bend hens from Papua New Guinea on the top there. Hopi Indian drive pieces. Come on in. This is the studio area. I got a kitchen. It was all uh, handmade by a folk artist named Craig Carey. And on the other side, this is kind of like my wall of uh, chain. These are my 30, I look at it as my 30 pit best pictures I ever did, but I got lots more coming. Um, this is my digital camera here. I shoot with the Mamaya. I shoot with two cameras. I shoot with the Mamaya uh, with a leaf back and I shoot with a Canon 5D. I shoot about 99% digital now. A lot of people think I still shoot film because they still see things with film borders, but we, do, we enhance them digitally and put them on ourselves. Back here is the shooting area. I really don't need a lot of space. Um, I have about, the, the whole studio is about 1,750 square feet. Shooting area is about 750 square feet. As I said yesterday, I shot 22 people. 22 people in here all together, a big group of 16 at the beginning. There's my digital area here. Uh, my assistant Enrique sits here. Um, I got a, a Epson printer and I got the, I use Apple equipment. We find that works the best way with our, uh, our, our software. I use a uh, program called Image Print, which really makes my prints look more photographic. We try it sometimes without and sometimes with it and you find out it really makes it look like a photograph again. And this is, as I said, this is the studio area. And uh, I keep things pretty simple. My backgrounds, I got six backgrounds on rollers. And they're uh, motorized over there. Uh, there's a motor, motor control. And uh, I have six different backgrounds. As you'll see during the day, I change them for different shootings, for different ideas. But my lighting keeps pretty simple. Well, thanks for coming and uh, welcome. Hi, we're in Mark Hauser's studio and we're gonna get a chance to talk to Mark about a handful of different topics, business primarily, but knowing Mark, I'm sure there'll be some crazy things injected into the conversation too. So Mark, uh, thanks for inviting us in today, by the way. Thanks for coming, Will. Uh, we get questions all the time from photographers who are really interested about how a niche photographer, which you are, black and white portraiture, how a niche photographer gets new business. How do you promote your business to bring new faces into your studio? Well, we do many things. Uh, one of the beginning main things I do is postcards. I do uh, a postcard a month. I send it to a cross base of, uh, I, I buy my list from a, a company called Creative Access, and they give me a different cross base each time because I'm trying to get my name to different people. But I try to show a different type of photography with each card because I might send a family uh, card with a little kid, but they don't have any little kids, so next time I send a family picture, then a couple picture. But every time I send a postcard with a different picture, also, I try to put personal notes on it to certain people. We also get uh, our base from our old photographer, the people that we've already done portraits of. We send a lot of cards. My assistant Valerie just sent out a thousand promotions for the hundred dollar portrait, which is another way we bring people in. I get involved with charity things, which brings a lot of customers in. And you don't make the money on the hundred dollars; you make it on the the print order on the back end, 
Let's talk about your charity portraits. You are well known in the photo community for doing a, a rather unusual promotion, which is you team up with a different charity. Every time. And then you send a postcard out to the charity's list as well as your list saying... It's about 10,000 names. 10,000 names. And you let them know that you can come on into your studio, be photographed by you, a master photographer. You actually do the photography on those, right? Right, right. Everyone. Okay. And what do they pay for the basic sitting? Uh, it's $100 per person. And how much of that goes to the charity? Uh, 20%. That's, that's amazing. 20% to the charity for the, the shooting mm -hmm. and 20% to the, uh, for the print order. So on a typical charity portrait drive that you put together, how many postcards do you think total you send out? We send 10,000 in the mail when we print another 5,000 for just leaving at grocery stores, restaurants. I drop them off at mostly high-end restaurants, also places that have my show. I have a lot of photographic shows at like Bar Louie, the Saloon, different restaurants all around the city. And then we, uh, when people come in, we give them 10 cards, say, hey, pass this out to your friends. We know you have some. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I do also do make the offer to some people, if you get 10 people to bring in the card with your name on it, I'll do a few free portrait for you. Wow, terrific. I did a portrait of Ray Kroc, and that's how it all started. A long time ago, he said to me, I asked him, how do you make a million dollars, Ray? And he says, Mark, find one item that people, a million people pay a dollar for. So I figure if I could get one item that people pay a hundred dollars and they a uh, thousand, I find a thousand people. That's pretty good. Well, that's great advice because I know from helping you with some of these projects that your charity portraits draw in some amazing numbers. What's been the most successful one? Uh, the first one I did was for the American Diabetic Association, mm -hmm. and that I sent out uh, a, a sumo card from Modern Postcard. And I spent like $5,000 to send out the cards with the cards. We sent them out to every art director and designer in the city of Chicago. That's 10,000 cards. We got 9,800 responses. I did 9,800 people. That's times $100. That's almost unheard of. That it came to a unbelievable. Then, then the print orders. We did an average of uh, three to $500 with the print orders per person that walked in the door. So it was an amazing amount of money that came in the door. The charity made a lot of money. Uncle Sam made a lot of money, and I did okay. Let's talk about printing. Not so much in the earlier days, but now. We're in the digital age. You, thank goodness, took your time moving from film to digital. Uh, I know that it took you a, a long time to get the quality of digital black and white portraiture where you thought it was suitable for a photographer of your caliber. Uh, Equipment-wise, I know that you're shooting with two different cameras. You're shooting with a Canon 5D and the Leaf 22 megapixel digital capture back fitted onto a Mamiya 645 camera. Right. Uh, I, I assume, at least the last time I was here, you were using the Leaf system more than the Canon system. Is that true? Well, now it's kind of like crossing over because I find that for the charity portrait things, you got smaller files. Most, the biggest somebody makes a print for the charity portraits it's usually about 60 by 20. now we ask people when they come in are you thinking about making bigger prints of these things if they're thinking about doing like i had a family come in here the other day they wanted a four foot by five foot then i use the leaf but for most of the average charity portrait people now i use the canon system because i can fit more uh information on my it's a faster camera it takes up less space on my uh hard drives and uh, a lot of people ask for proof sheets now. When we first started, uh, we would just we, what, what you'll see today is people come in and they look at the monitors and they order from there. But we have more and more people asking for proof sheets. I charge extra for the proof sheets. I charge $150 for the uh, set of proof sheets because it costs money. And uh, you know, a long time ago, I never would let anybody leave with the proof sheets. So a lot of people want to leave with the proof sheets and look at the pictures and. You know, see how, see which ones they want. Hey, oh, wait, you do it, 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 do
This way, Morgan. That's it. That's great. One more go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. We got it. Well, Morgan, that's it. That's great. Morgan, put your hand on your father's shoulder. Uh, other hand, other hand. Can she scoot her hair out of the, her eyes too? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. That's it, right? There. That's it, right, Morgan? Just other. But everybody lean this way a little bit. Okay, right there. Scooter, 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 Hey. That's it. You got it right there. One more. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. The production and the technical aspects of a studio the size of Mark's is a very big job. To cover that ground is Enrique Martinez, a longtime Shoot Smarter friend. In fact, those of you who came to Shoot Smarter University may recognize Enrique because he used to help us out quite a bit too. Enrique, uh, hi. Good to see you. Yeah, hello, Will. Uh, Ricky's going to help us out, answer some questions about how Mark chooses to get the files from his camera into the computer show them to the customers, print them, store them, everything we need to know from start to finish. So, uh, Enrique, you're used to using two cameras here in the Hauser studio, the medium format back and the Canon 5D. Correct. I noticed in the photo sessions that Mark likes to shoot the leaf back tethered, meaning the camera's connected to the computer so the files pop up on the computer as he goes. You know, we want to make sure we're capturing everything, that everything's good, we don't want no mistakes, and if there are mistakes, we know them right away. That way the image just pops right away, and that's the way we do it. Do you shoot the Canon 5D in a tethered mode as well? We also do that. Uh, we just use a uh, Phase One. So the Phase One's Capture One software, which allows you to yeah. connect some Canon cameras tethered. Correct. Does that mean that you shoot everything as a RAW file? Well, we do shoot RAW and um, JPEGs on the 5D. Mm -hmm. Just sometimes, you know, it's, just, it's a faster workflow. People just want some JPEGs or it's easier to go through them rather than just to process the whole images, the, the whole leaf, raw files. The leaf file doesn't have the ability to shoot in JPEG. It shoots only in RAW, right? Correct. So when you're shooting tethered from the leaf back, you're capturing a 22 megapixel file Correct. coming across a firewire cable to a Macintosh computer and it pops up on the screen and you can quality check as it goes. I certainly do. When you shoot the 5D in the same method connected with a firewire cable, does it offer the same speed as the leaf back? The, actually, the 5D is a little quicker. However, the Mamaya, it's a little slower because it's just a big file. So, you know, you have 30, 30 meg files um, just coming in all the time. If it shoots 10, that's 300 megabytes. So it does slow it down, even though we're shooting FireWire 800 um, connections to hard drives. So you're going to set up the 5D to shoot tethered in RAW plus JPEG mode. Correct. Assuming you're using the largest JPEG, large, fine quality yes. JPEG. Mm -hmm. And do you set it to black and white mode right off the bat? If we know what we're going to shoot it black and white, we'll keep it black and white. If we know we're going to convert it into a different colors, then we just try sticking it to our color mode. How about Photoshop? How does it fit into your normal mainstream workflow? Well, Photoshop right here, it's used very minimal. Um, usually it's just used to crop an image or add a border. That's probably about what we do here with just about Photoshop. If some people just want a little touch up beneath their eyes, I, I could do that right away. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time. But other than that, it's very minimal and it's just a cropping tool and just let's minor retouch and that's about it and they just save that image into their folder. Most portrait photographers really have never had any access to a tool like a leaf back or a phase back. The reason that you went with that was because quality initially? Well, I find that the, it's not only that you can blow it up really big, but the more information you have on that back, the better detail, the richer blacks, you really do get a better capture with the, the leaf back than you do with the 5D. I don't care what anybody tells me. When I when I when we print alum, when Enrique prints eleven by fourteen with the leaf back and prints eleven by fourteen with that 5D, there's a positively unbelievable difference. The skin tones, the highlights, the highlights on the 5D wash out a little bit most of the time on the high end. With the with the leaf capture, you don't lose anything. I mean, it, it sticks in there, it holds all the blacks. It, I mean, it, it's, it's a bigger file, it's got more information, you got more detail. 
Uh, I agree. Personally, I've shot those cameras and other cameras as well. And for what you do, that super fine edge of medium format is terrific. The, the bad, bad part is that when you look across America and we talk to portrait photographers in Lincoln, Nebraska, the, their business model won't support spending $23,000 on a digital back. So is there really $20,000 $20, difference between that, that 8x10 print that you deliver off of 5D versus that same 8x10 print if you would have no. shot it on a leaf back? No. I, I, if you're just doing 8x10s, you don't need the leaf back. If you're doing 11x14s, you don't need the leaf back. So when you start getting, I mean, if you're going for maximum and you're really into that classic black and white look, you got, you got to bite the bullet and spend the money. I mean, I hate to say it, but you know, you, it, it, you know, you want want the quality, you got to pay for the quality. You want that extra little edge, and that's also when people hire me, they're buy, hiring me because of that extra edge. They're paying a little more for my my, my talent because I have the, the the great tools. I just did a portrait for LaSalle Bank and the Bank of America merger, and they called in portfolios. And they saw my, my, my pictures in black and, white, black and white and color digital. And they saw other people's stuff and they said nobody even came comparable to what my, my they said, you know, my lighting is really simple. But what really helps when you shoot with a back like this is the richness. It really ha has a lot more richness than leaf back than the, when you're shooting with that 5D. <laughs>
I just lean lean over like that again. Okay. Oh, you threw that again. That's a break room. You're coming a little light that makes that light go off. Okay, here we go. One more. Perfect. That's it. That. Okay, look down the floor. Look toward me. A little small go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Go, yes, Mark. Go, mm hmm. Turn your head that way. Okay, I want you to turn the chair and just sit in it naturally. That's it. Now sit in it naturally. That's it. Bring the chair back a little bit more. Back this way. Okay, now turn the, sit on the chair this way. Okay, now lean over that way. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Oh, move the chair this way a little bit more. Okay, right there. Put your hand just like this. Okay, that's it. Get your hair so it's not bumping out. No, it's bumping out. Okay, that's it right there. Now try it. Okay, turn your head this way now, Morgan. Okay, get your hair out of your eye a little bit. Okay, here we go. Don't move. Perfect. Don't move. Look toward me. Where's the dog? Dog's gone? Put your, put your feet just like this. That's it, right there. Lean forward. Okay, turn your head that way. Shake your head. Okay, that's it. Look toward me, Morgan. Come on, perfect. Okay, just like that. Come on. Head down. Look toward me, Morgan. Again, just like that. That's really nice. That's it, right there. Little smile. Okay, where's that dog? Here he is. Okay. Get in there. Give Margie some of those treats with her hands so she can. Margie knows what to do. Do the back of the chair behind him now, Morgan. So, so it's turn like a regular chair. Yeah, you got it. I'll bring your legs all the way apart. Okay, that's it. That's great. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's great. Right there. Bring your head up, Morgan. Up. Okay, just that. Ah! Hug the dog, bring the dog this way a little bit more. Okay, now hug it. That's great, right there. Don't know. Okay, look towards the dog. Little smile, little smile. Da -da 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 -da. Look towards me, Morgan. Da -da 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 -da. Morgan, smile. Da -da -da -da. Head that way. Ah, that's great, right there. That's it, right there. That's great. Morgan, head that way. Turn, look down. Okay. Try to get the dog as close to your head as possible if you can. Okay. Here we go. Move this way, the dog. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Here we go. That's great. Don't move. Okay. One more. That's great. Right there. Morgan, don't hide behind the dog. Move this way a little bit. Are we okay? Yes. Oh, that was great. Don't move. One more. We're done. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, and then what I want you guys to yeah. do now is go around the computer. Okay. <laughs> what you do is you go through and you write down the numbers you like. All right, Morgan, you got to get a pen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Morgan got to pick out. You, you need to be able to see. You should be killing each other two or three. Oh, okay. And just with this right here, like the uh -huh. mouse here. Just scroll them down. Okay. Okay. But I think this is the winner. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. What well, number is that one? Eleven. 11. Okay. Yeah. I love Cooter in that shot too, though. I know. On, on thirteen. Yeah. It's a good uh, his, his face is just. So bad. Well, so mine's not so good, but you girls are great. Eleven. Eleven. Thirteen. You got a pen? You like 13? Yeah, I like 13. You're sure? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm not great. It's fine. Okay. 11. Or you can have my Google eyes there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12. Where's that one? Let's go back one. Oh. And these other ones. And everyone's looking. Look at the cooter. He's like stuffed animal there. Yeah. I like two. Yeah, let's do a two. All right. Two, seven, 11, and 13. So the leaf shots that we saw come through the studio today are presented on some sort of thumbnail system for you to show your customers. What software is that? This is actually the contact sheet software that comes with the leaf software. 
So that's the Leaf software yeah. that you get for free when you buy your Leaf back? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and it just displays them as they're, as, they're as they're coming in, he's shooting, and they just start popping up here. If there's a problem, again, I would just tell Mark and we would just fix it from there. So we're seeing a whole folder worth of files. Correct. Those are all raw files. Yes. How big is that raw file? Each file, it's about 34 megabytes. And then when you convert those to an 8-bit black and white, I'm assuming you use TIFF instead of JPEG? Yes. What size are those? It's about 47, I believe, megabytes. It depends if it's color or black and white image. And do you process them all just the full blast size and worry about it later? Yes, I just we keep it simple, you know, shoot it right and then and then you yeah. don't have to deal about yeah, it. Everybody out hard, <laughs> shoot it right, forget Photoshop, where's the money? Right on, right on. How many people just settle for that minimum one print, percentage wise, versus buy more? I would say 90% of the people will buy more. And why is it? Because they're so happy with the images, or is it because they see that print and they can have it right now? I think the instant gratification has a lot to do with it. But people are, I have to say, no, people are willing to wait for it. People come in all the time, and sometimes they don't pick up their pictures for uh, that we make the prints. We say, well, they'll be done in an hour, and they say, we'll come back, and then they don't show back for a week or so. I think it's a matter of that they see the quality, they see that they're getting such an unbelievable price here, because they usually charge 2500 for a family portrait, that they go, we better do it now, because we'll probably never get this, thing, uh, this happen again. Um, also, then they start going, our grandpa needs one, our grandma needs one, which other people in the family. And then when you're doing a, a, a group shot of like five people, they each want to walk away with something. Um, that's how it mounts up. That's why it's such a great thing to do because that $100 turns into $500 with just a stab of the finger. Hey, do you ever get anybody that takes a look at the fact that it's an inkjet printer, even though it's a large professional inkjet printer, and they go, hey, I got an inkjet printer at home. Any chance I can just get the files and I can print it myself? Well, for the charity deal, I do sell the uh, files for Christmas cards. We make it just a big enough file that they can make a Christmas card. I never sell my files that they can make big, that they can get a file where they can make any print any size with it. We make enough so they can make a Christmas card of it. And we charge $350 for that, for them to walk out of here with a CD with an image about five by seven. After that, it starts falling apart. But they can make a nice Christmas card out of it. And, and let's be clear, that's only selling that file to a portrait, a charity right, portrait right. customer. No, no commercial, they can't we use it for websites, no commercial use, just for Christmas cards. Right, the big advertising shoots that you do yeah. and the editorial shoots, no way, right? Well, no way. I mean, uh, my average uh, uh, advertising shoot this day, these days starts between 3500 and 5000 And then I, st I charge usage for those pictures. And the usage could go from like ten to fifteen thousand per picture, mm -hmm. and then I'm not talking about a whole photo session. They just buy certain pictures during the photo session. They pay per usage for the time I, I they use it. Okay, you got it. Okay, I want you to take your shoes off and your socks. Oh my God! You got incense. Well, it's t socks off too. Socks too, man. Socks too? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then we're going to do, take these paddles and put one on the, on the I'll explain to you what we're going to do. We're going to have one right in front of them. Right in front of them, hitting this, that's it right there. You got it. Then, is that the right side? I'm just asking. One right there. Right against the wall, and one right there. There you got it, right there. Okay, now, you're gonna put a pizza on each one of those. Yeah. Oh. Oh, change the lens? Yeah, give me a second. Oh, we're gonna have to bring the light down now. Kill me after this, Charles. 
<laughs> Put the uh, one with all the stuff on it in the center. You got it. Which is the one? Can he hold all either one, any of these up? I'll just do it like this, Cedric. I don't need to change lenses. Charlie, well, listen to me very carefully. Okay. Charlie, you got to hold the pizza like this. Put the braid going across the shoulder like this. Yeah. So the braid is on his shoulder, going down his arm. Down farther, down farther, down farther, down farther. Okay, so you want this on? Let me keep going, now turn it, okay, right there, right there, that's good. I'll just push it in. Okay, right there, I can't see, you're right in front of it. How do you, how, how can I see, yeah, the ponytail's good. Right a little farther forward. Right there, that's great, right there. I'll put the pizza, like, right here, he's going to hold it like this. So this, the, that, that is arm on the bottom, no, 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 like this. Around, just I didn't know. Put one arm like this. Uh, switch arms. No, no. Okay, you got it right there, right there. Bring the arm down. Yeah, I don't care. Bring your arms down. Okay, go ahead. Okay, no smile, no smile. Just a bit. No move. Okay, just a bit. Look down the pizza with your eyes. Head up. Bring your head up. Head up. Head up. Chin up. Chin up. Chin up. Head up. Okay, right, down now. Right there. That's great. There. Perfect. Does that close your eyes? That's right. The Guinness pizza. The Guinness pizza. Don't move. That's great. Close your eyes. Perfect. Does that that? Move the pizza this way. No, no. No, no. The same thing. Hold it like you were. And now move it this way. Move this way more. No, no. Move the pizza this way. No, no. Tilt it straight up towards me. Now move it that way. Just move your arms this way. Like that. Oh. Not too much. Flatten it out. Oh. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, that's it right there. Don't move. Perfect. Just a second. Don't move. Put it right in front of you now. And the ponytail move. Can you bring the ponytail back where you had it? Hello? She's in the office, Marquis. Oh. Just put the ponytail back where it was. Where was it at? In the back? It was, it was right there. No, 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 no. Right there. Now... Come to, bring it down a little bit. Right there. Perfect. Just a there. Look, close your eyes. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. That's right there. That's great. Head down. Right there. That's great. Right there. Perfect. Don't move. Again, just like that. Don't move. Look towards me. Okay, just like that. Don't sit. Little smile. Okay, close your eyes now. Little smile. Little more. A little more. Bigger, bigger smile. That's great. Again, just said that. That's great. How's that look, Enrique? Open your eyes. Okay, just look up to the sky. That's great. Just said that. That's great. Perfect. Up higher. We're going to get this perfect. Don't move. Okay, just a little smile. Okay, just said that. Little smile. Open your eyes. Go. Mm-hmm. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, just said like that. Perfect. That's the shot. Don't move. We got it. Okay. Corner shot. Where did it come from? Well, the corner shot came from actually when I used to have an old house on Berry Street. And I used to photograph my friends in the corner of the room. Then I saw photographs by a guy named Irving Penn. And he kind of like got me to focus into it more on how it could be more of a dynamic shot. I found it was something, another thing, less like the table shot, for people to lean on, to be comfortable, to be a place where they feel secure. That's where the corner, what the corner shot's all about. It's got angles, so it brings your eye in to the subject, and it's some place where people are comfortable. They're comfortable in a room. They're hanging out in their bedroom. I bring a chair in there. I bring an easy chair. Anything, just get them to be comfortable. So this is kind of a kind of a, a kind of a, a crazy shot. But it's still uh, something that the corner is bringing you into this subject and getting you to look at them with his pizzas and everything. How long have you been doing it? I'd say I've been doing the corner. Well, I did the corner shot when I was like 
16 or 17 in the corner of a room. I did a bunch of those. But the quarter shot, I think I've been doing about 15 years. And you just take one light and you put it up above and that's it? That's it. We're in the front studio reception area for Mark Hauser's studio. And this is where customers come in and pay their bill and get their times changed and prints reordered. The uh, gal in charge who runs shotgun over this whole operation is Valerie Sherrington. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Will. Hi. Hey, how long have you been here at the Hauser Studios? I've been with Mark uh, three or four months now. And how's it been? Every day is something different and fun and lots of variety and you never know who you're going to run into or who's going to call on the phone or who you get to ship packages to. Uh, today we've got a, a, is it a typical Saturday booking? I would say so, yeah. Okay. We've got uh, five people who made appointments. Mm -hmm. One is canceled for the day today. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with canceled appointments? We request a deposit from everyone when they book. That also confirms that they're coming, you know. Uh, that way we don't call two or three days out and say, hey, are you guys still coming because well, we're waiting for you. We have a digital tech here. We have uh, a lot of times a stylist on staff. And so we're paying them for the whole day. We need to make sure that the whole day happens. So what's it cost for a typical, I'm assuming we're doing all uh, charity portraits today? We are. Mm -hmm. So that's a $100 minimum. It's $100 per person. Mm -hmm. So two people together, $200. Uh, two kids separately, $200. How it works is they get an 8 by 10 portrait with their sitting. So mm -hmm. earlier today we did two kids together and then the two kids with, mom, with the mom. So it was $200 for the two kids and then $300 for the three of them and they'll get two separate 8 by 10s. So do they know that ahead of time what they're going to order? Um, they definitely know that they're getting an 8 by 10. Most often we walk out with, or they walk out with, ordering an additional either sheet that's 8 by 10s and 5 by 7s or another 11 by 14. Very rarely is it just, I've paid my $100 and that's all I want. Gotcha. Uh, what's the deposit when they call to book an appointment? It's $100 or $200, whatever the fee is for the day. The whole fee? Mm-hmm. Good. Did people balk about that? They, there seems to be some questions about, oh, I thought it was $100 total, or you know, but I make it very clear to them when they call, too. Well, Mark is a, a world-class, he's a master photographer, a living master photographer. Do most people know that when they come in for a $100 charity portrait? Some of them don't. I mean, our repeat customers do, and they certainly know the value of such a great price. So people call up to make an appointment. It's over the phone, or is it email, or how do you do Mostly it? Mostly it's over the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they slot in a time, and you, when you have a busy day like today, how far apart do you space those appointments? I put one, like, on every hour. Because it's digital, they order their print and leave with it the same day. So. Pretty much 45 minutes, though, is a good time frame. Uh, I noticed Mark likes to stay on time. There was a couple today that came in, they were about 10 minutes early, mm -hmm. and he wanted his downtime in order to get ready to go, but when it was 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. he shot like a slingshot out there and just turns it on. I think they were out the door in like 20 minutes. I mean, mm -hmm. they're coming back to pick up their prints, and they have that choice, but yeah, about 20 minutes, and he did four individual shots, including a baby and a little kid in that time. Mm -hmm. When you have days where Mark's not shooting the typical portraits and is doing a big commercial or advertising shoot, mm -hmm. uh, I've seen there's rather elaborate sets built back there. There's hair and makeup folks. There may even be clients, art directors. Mm -hmm. How do you book those days in between the portraits? Those days with the market now are a lot of times last minute, you know, a week out, two weeks out. So we keep our portrait times really flexible um, because the commercial obviously is real important. And our portrait people understand, hey, we just got to move a day. Uh, we did a shoot a couple weeks ago that confirmed on Monday at 2 p.m. and we shot on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Wow. So we had to have all of our assistants kind of waiting in the wings. Hey, we think we got the job. We think we're doing it tomorrow. Um, but we had to call the van people and the equipment rental and whatever. So as soon as we got the go, I mean, that morning it was boom, 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 picking things up, getting things organized. I went over there the day before to scout and do some shots so Mark could see what he was walking into, what equipment we need to bring, where we might be shooting it from. Wow, and you do all that stuff personally, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you keep pretty busy. You, you probably put more hours in here than anybody else does. I do, yeah. You know, because I, because my job is so varied from answering the phone to doing the bookkeeping and paying the bills to helping market for Mark. And that's really what we seem to be focusing on this year is that selective marketing. Not trying to blab five times to 5,000 people, but really find those ones that Mark's worked with in the past that know his work to say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. We're ready to be busy again and, you know, give us a call. Oh, he's lucky to have somebody like you. Are you on a commission? I know. Well, I'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time today. I appreciate your help. Thanks, Will. Sure. Got a table in front of you there for Mark's table shop? Correct. How far away is that from the background? It's about, say, eight feet. And the Quadra Bank, is it typically that close to the subject? It's always this close to the subject when we're shooting tabletops. Um, and that's the way Mark likes it to have it be. That black cutter panel over there, that's keeping the light from spilling onto the background? This light um, hits our subject here and it splits, it's, uh, spills it to the backdrop over there. By having the cutter cart here, it blocks the light from hitting the left side of your image. And, and therefore, it makes it darker. And how do you know where to put that cutter cart? Uh, we just get it as close as we can to our frame, and then we just go from there. And if it's, you know, if it's an inch away from our frame, then mm -hmm. that's just good enough. It's out of our frame. Whatever we need is in our frame. And I notice instead of a tripod, Mark likes to use a camera stand. Yes, he does. We only use tripods on location. Mm -hmm. He really likes this stand. And your fill board there to your right, mm -hmm. that's your fill light. This is our fill light. And then just depending on how much fill we want it to, to be in our image, just we move it closer or just push it back away. Sometimes we don't even use it. Now I noticed that the, the tabletop fabric mm -hmm. that you're using Correct. matches pretty darn close to the background. Is mm -hmm. that typically the case? Yes, usually we have when we're making our backdrops, because these are custom made, we ask for another piece just that matches the, the, the backdrop and then we just cut it down. Or we have we order it extra long and then we just cut it ourselves and then we just place it on our tabletop. And this is just the normal table. I mean, there's nothing to it. Uh, how often do you use only that one main light versus how often do you use two lights, a second light being on the background? Uh, depending on the amount of people that we're shooting. We're using, shooting like a family and it's going to be more crowded here. It's going to prevent the light to spill on the back. That's when we probably accommodate, uh, we would use uh, the fill light in the background. And to power that, you're using a separate pack? Yes, we, we use separate packs for both of them, individuals. Now, what about the background light? That looks like it's got a little more power going to it. Yes, it does. And that's why we just keep on running separate. Um, and it's just because we just shoot it at a slightly higher f-stop than our main, main light. So if it's a two light shot, Correct. you're gonna use your flash meter at mm -hmm. the subject position pointed back into the camera. All right. And what's a typical working aperture for Mark? Uh, it's usually 11 or 16, depending on how much, how much we could get out of the power and then without not being too slow on, on the recycle time. Mm -hmm. And then the back one would just be either half a stop higher. So f11 or f16 on a mm -hmm. portrait, and I notice focal length lens is somewhere around 80 millimeters. He's he's seen. Uh, he likes to use a lot the 80 millimeter, mm -hmm. and we just do switch around to our zoom, uh, 105 to. Is it 55 to 105? And that's on the medium format. And system. that's on a medium format. Okay. Uh, pardon me uh, for asking, but f11, f16, boy, that's a lot of depth of field. Yes, why it is. why such a tall aperture setting? Um, just because like marks to have a lot of sharpness in his images. And what about ISO settings for the? Uh, ISO, we just keep it at 100. So keep it really simple. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you're using a, a wireless triggering system. What's your system of choice? Uh, we use pocket wizards just because, you know, they're really easy to use. And we, we use the simple one four channel. So we don't need more than that. We only use two lights. And we only use one po two pocket wizards, one for the camera and one for our power pack. And then you're tripping the lights with your flash meter? Correct. Built in pocket wizard? With a pocket wizard. Wow, nice and simple. Mm -hmm. Does it ever get more complicated than this? Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs>
Put both hands just like this down. That's great. Perfect. Don't move. Okay, just like that. Look down to the floor. Right there. Oh, oh, just like that. Don't move. Put your, hold your hand, your glasses on, on the sides. Okay, just like that. Don't move. Now bring your head up. Okay, just like that. Don't move. Pre okay, just like that. One more, just like that. Little smile. You're done. You want to go, why don't you get over there, Mom, and tickle okay, him and then okay. get down. Get, Ready? Okay. What's wrong? No, I was just going to tell her where to be. You're a little hot. No? No, fine. Okay. Why don't you get him over here and so he's looking at the light? Okay. Get right over here, Mom. Underneath there. Okay. That's Mr. it. Bobby. Bobby. No, 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 no. Get over here. Get in front of the softbox. Right here. I get right here. So he's looking at it. Now come over towards the camera. Okay, right there. Again, you're gonna enjoy this little smile. <laughs> What's that sound? What is that sound? Hey, Bowie, look at this camera over here. <laughs> this is why I wanted to shoot it with the, with the other camera. Bowie. Okay, here you go. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a little tickle. I'm going to get you right here. Come here, Bobby. Look. I'm going to get you right here. Right here. There we go. Put his hands together. Can you get his hands together, maybe? Oh, I, know. I don't know. I know he's balancing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right there. I think we got it. Okay. Okay, now get him in there. Yeah. In chair. Okay, bring your legs across your legs. Indian style. There we go. Perfect. Put both hands on. Okay, get rid of this. Okay, just like that. Perfect. Okay, just like that. Just like that. Look towards me. Look towards me. Okay, go. Mm-hmm. Can you do that? Go. Mm-hmm. Put both hands on the, the chair. Like this. Okay, there we go. Perfect. You're the king. Okay, here you go. Nice smile. Can you smile? That's great. That's great. Perfect. Okay, put your legs down now. Okay, just like that. Put your hands like this. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Just like that. Nice smile. Give me a smile. Go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go, yeah! Okay, yeah! 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 Put your hands like this. Cross your arms. Cross your arms. Cross them. Okay, just like that. Don't move. Look at your hands. Go, yeah! 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 When you need to create a raw file into a printable file, on the LEAF system you're using the LEAF 
software. Correct. And if you're using the Canon system, you're using the Capture One RAW Correct. processor. Then you end up with typically a TIFF file that's in black and white, right? Yes. Then you want to print that to an inkjet printer. Can you tell us how you do that? Yeah, well, we have a software's image print. An image print, uh, what it does, it's a RIP software. And then it just, you know, it's very is easy. I don't know how these guys do it. Um, and they have profiles. You have to get the profile for your paper. And depending on your paper, you set it either be a color mode or just a gray mode, a gray scale. And depending on that, you just drop your image in their queue and then you set it print. And it's the easiest thing because when, you when you're printing black and white, it prints everything on a gray scale rather than it being sorted into the magenta side or into the green side. A lot of photographers mm -hmm. have so much trouble with black and white. In mm -hmm. fact, a lot of the labs that I get a chance to work with have problems with black mm -hmm. and white, and they've all solved them in different ways. You're delivering an inkjet print that's created on an Epson, it looks like a 4800, 4, Epson 4800, mm -hmm. using color inks as mm -hmm. well as the mixed black and white inks. Correct. So you're using image print software in order to get those robust colors that we see on those Hauser prints? Yes, we do. What's your paper of choice this week? Uh, we're using LexJet. LexJet? Yes. And They're believe, fibers? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's fine art photo media. Nice. And you're using Epson inks. Correct. And image print to drive them. Correct. And what about the tints that we see on those? Are you applying those tints in Photoshop or are you getting the tinted flavor from the image print rip? Uh, from the image print. Have you got a set formula of image print settings that you want to just put onto? And sometimes we just yeah we have it, uh, it and then you could save the, the those settings in your an image print and then you just apply them mm -hmm. if you just wanted different variations kind of flavor. And do you notice problems with color creeping into black and white when you don't want it in the system that you have? No, I don't. I never see that problem. How consistent is it from day to day to day? It's as consistent as it could be. And you're using the default image print setting, so it's printing at 1440 as its resolution? Correct. And do you use bi-directional printing or is it just one? Uh, bi-directional. Bi-directional. Mm -hmm. So fast, easy, mm -hmm. nothing to it. No. Hmm. How can it be so easy? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, your monitors. You're Correct. using Apple monitors. You've got yes. two different flavors right there. Yes. Uh, from our testing on Shoot Smarter, mm -hmm. we know that Apple monitors are cool looking. Yes, they are. Uh, they're easy on your eyes. Yes. However, they're not the world's most accurate mm -hmm. monitors. Absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Here is a world class photographer who has got unbelievable mm -hmm. print quality. However, you don't have super accurate screen to print match with your inkjet printer. Uh, no, we don't. However, when I came here, these monitors were already here. Um, they're really nice monitors. People that come here are impressed all the time. However, I'm not. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. What percentage do you have screen to print match? I say about probably 60, 75 percent accuracy. I mean, it's not all there. So these gorgeous files that you create Correct. on a leaf back pop up on the screen. Mm -hmm. However, you can only trust 60, maybe 70% of the information you see. Yes. Because when you send that to the printer, you're getting more and you're getting correct data on the print. Correct. I do my metering for my setups, each setup that we do. And I know that if you color balance everything, it's going to come out right. When you say color balance, do you mean the custom white balance before you take the picture? Correct. Yes, not on the, on the monitor. I mean... I'm seeing an image and I know it's not perfect here, but I know if when I print it out, it's gonna be good. And how do you know that? Because I have trust my meter and I trust my color balancing. So you move lights around all day when you're yes. changing from Mark between uh, the shot you did of a mm -hmm. seven month old boy Correct. to a family of five with a dog. Yes. So you're basically taking one or two lights, spinning them around all, of, all over the place. Correct. You grab your flash meter, jump inside there. Meter it meter it out, set mm -hmm. the camera or adjust the lights, whatever you need to, yes. and then it's a non-issue. Correct. And then most of the time we're shooting black and white here, so therefore the monitors, we, we're not dealing so much with color. So when a customer comes in for, say, a charity portrait and they order one 8x10 from mm -hmm. the photo session, how often do you just print it live and they get to take it with them as they leave? Um, about 50% of the time. Some people just either just take it or they, they'll wait or they'll just come back either later on in the day or some other time in, during the week. Mm -hmm. And then when you don't have 
photo sessions or you've got breaks between photo yes. sessions, that's when you come back in and you print the rest of the yes, print orders? Yes, and I either process the image and then I just print them out. And then if it's not a busy day, I could just turn it around in about 15 minutes. And, you, and they could leave with the print, depending on the order. Size. Okay, why well, you both look down towards the, get your hair out of your eye a little bit. Now look towards your brother. Okay, now, okay, that's it, don't move. Look toward me, that's great. Okay, put your hand down, put your, that's right there, that's great, no, perfect. Now get closer together. Okay, there's this gap between the two of you on the bottom, okay, here we go, perfect. That's great, don't move, don't move, perfect. That's great, a little smile, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, that's great. Head up a little bit, head up, that's it, right there. go, yeah. Get your hair out of your eye over there. Okay, that's great, perfect, that's great, perfect, that's great, don't move, that's it, don't move, don't move, oh, that's great. I want you, okay, just like that, that's great. Okay, I want you to put both of your hands on your sister like this. Like this, yeah, that's it, now, now get it, sit, stand up, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, there we go, perfect. That's it, right there. that's it right there, that's great. Okay, there we go. Okay, no more. I want you to switch places. Since you can do it without holding your hands up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and now lean like this. That's it. That's your right that, that's perfect. No more. Okay, no more. Perfect. Just like that. That's great. Don't move. Okay, that's good. Just like that. Don't move. Perfect. Okay, go. Mm-hmm. I want you to lean down towards them now. There we go. That's better. That's better. Don't move. That's great. Don't move. That's great. Perfect. Turn your head towards me more. Okay, that's it. Turn your body towards me. Okay, there. Turn your head that way. No, his, hers. Okay, get your hair out of your eye. That's great. Right there. Perfect. That's great. Okay, that's great. Turn your body straight towards me. Okay, this is that. Now turn your head that way. Okay, now lean on that side. Okay, and lean. now lean down. Perfect. Can you get that cutter cutter out of there? Sure. Both of you move this way a little bit. Move your bodies this way. Okay, right there. That's good. Okay, here we go. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. That's great. Right there. Perfect. That's the shot. Don't move. Go. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Turn your head straight towards me. Okay. Now you're fine. Turn your head straight towards me. That's it. Get your bang out of your head. That's it. Right there. Perfect. That's great. Perfect. That's great. Don't move. That's great, perfect, that's it, go like that, go, yeah! <laughs> okay, look at each other. Don't get me dirty, look. Look toward me. Okay, that's great, one more, this, this, this. that's great. Okay, go, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Put your arms around him like this. Yeah, no, perfect, that's great, that's great, perfect. I'll move, just like that, perfect, just like that, that's great. Get your hair out of your eyes a little bit, that's it. Ready, one more, like just like that. Perfect, you got it right there, perfect. One more, just like that, you got it, we're done. Okay, I have to ask the question. All of Mark's light comes from the left side of the camera, yes. why? Uh, I believe because he's uh, left-handed. <laughs> and his right hand is for pressing the trigger button? Yes. <laughs> have you ever shot a Mark Hauser shot with the light on the right side? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Even when we go on location, he just puts it on the left. You have such a, a wonderful and unusual business and you have such a wonderful and unusual shooting style compared to the mainstream portrait photography company. I would say that. <laughs> Here you are located in a northern neighborhood of Chicago. We're in the, on the near north side in an area called Bucktown and you're nestled back to back to all kinds of homes. There's very, other, very few businesses in this neighborhood. Parking's difficult, uh, mm -hmm. however, people have no problems, no complaints, they just stream in, they stream back out. You spend 10 minutes worth of your magic and you get these incredible looking prints. The table shot setup that we have here today, how, how large of a percentage of the portraits that you do are really done on this table with that one soft light? 90%, maybe even more. Why is that? 
Because when people sit at the table, they're comfortable like they're at home at their dinner table. Um, I, I use the table because of consistency. So whenever they get right up to the, the um, table, that's exactly the f-stop it always is. Unless I change things of what reason why the lighting or I want to do a different type of look with it. But most of this stuff is one light and uh, it's the same exposure I shoot almost every day. I have 16. You know what? I never thought of that, but you're right. No matter who you are, what size or shape you are, you're basically going to stop at this line, meaning you're so far away from the light source that it's the same exposure every time, depending right. on where they are, of course, a little bit. Right. I never thought about that. That's how you can get your workflow. So it's so methodical. Right. And it's uh, people hire you because of your consistency. I think consistency was all about. And I wanted to come up with a way of keeping my stuff consistent so I could worry about getting great stuff out of people, not worrying about what the light looks like. I know that when people walk in there and the light's where it is and the exposure where it's at, it's going to look great. Now, you have a system here where people come on back to your studio. There you are. You're very open. You're all right there. Say hi. You're a friendly guy. Then when they come in and they sit down, I noticed you get shooting right away. You don't like to primp and prep. You want to have them come on in. And in fact, I saw one of the people today choose the third frame that you shot of only 19 frames. Does, does that happen often? You get it right off the bat? Yeah, I usually get it right off the bat. Um, usually when it's just one person, because I, because I kind of like, when I kind of mimic them when I watch them, when they walk in the room, I watch them. And then when they walk in, I say, hey, come on, walk over here, go over to the table. When I, when I go over to the table and I have them sit there, I watch what they do. Some people go all the way back to the wall and say, oh, I'm ready to pose. No, no, over by the table. Because <laughs> you know, they all think that they, they can get against the wall. So uh, you have to watch them, and then you see how they move their hands, they move their head, the way they smile, and then you kind of like do something that's crazy to see what they look like, if, they, if they're a laugher, if they're a blinker hit the flash a couple of times. I mean, you kind of like test, test them. How long did it take you to develop that whole pattern? Because I see sometimes you're soft, sometimes you grunt, sometimes you're loud. You've got certain keywords that you use and sometimes you even, you know, you scream. Well, I've seen uh, you scream. Well, the more I keep doing photography, the more I find little things. Like now I have this new thing where I have the people look at each other. Never did that before, but I find that it gives people a break for a second, and then they kind of like, it's kind of like you're giving them a break, and then they're coming back. When they come back, they're fresh. And you say, look at each other, look at each other. Okay, nah, 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 look at each, look at the camera. Okay, get the clothes together, smile, because it becomes fresh. And that's what you want from your portraits, is you want something fresh. Because what mostly happens when they're in that grouping is they become stagnant and stiff. And you want it to be relaxed. You want those smiles to be natural. You want it to be a natural moment. And what you got to do is create a natural moment, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, get ready to sit, chair. Okay, I want you to lean on your arm like this. Okay, just like that, lean down, come down. Well, you know, give him the chair. He's tall. No, up high as it goes. Okay. Press the button. Okay, here you go. Bring it all the way forward. Okay, now lean on her, just like this. Okay, that's great. That's it. And you're going to be forward, too, and you're going to put your arm around your brother? Okay, that's great. Perfect. That's it. And put your hand on your mother's shoulder. That's great. Perfect. That's it. That. That's great. Okay, there we go. That's great. Perfect. That's like that. One more. That's like it. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it right there. Get your hair out behind you a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. That's great. Perfect. Again, just like that. That's great. Don't move. Perfect. Just like that. Go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's that look? Oh, that looks great. Just like that. Everybody look at each other. Okay, just like that. Ready? You look at each other. That's great. Okay, look towards me. Again, just like that. Perfect. Okay, now lean down towards your mom more. You're, you're fine. You can come down more if you can. Get on one knee. Okay, come all the way around. Put your arm around your daughter. Me? Yeah, yeah. And now put your hands like this here. 
next to your mom and get in there more. Okay, now you get in there more. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Just like that. That's great. Perfect. Just like that. A little. That's great. You got to get closer to your mom at the bottom end. Down here. Okay, you got it right, you got it right there. Put your arm like that. Okay, right there. You got it. Okay, ready? I'm ready to go. Okay, here we go. This is it. Head up, head up, head up. That's great. They smiled, everybody. That's great. Perfect. Okay, this is it. That's great. Put your arms around your mom. Both of you, hug. <laughs> hug, this is it. That's great. Hug, 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 hug. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Okay, now turn your head this way more. So you, Okay, there we go. Now bring your shoulder that way. There we go. You got it right there. That's it. Get your hands, whose hands, that, bring that down. No, keep your hands up. No, the other hand down. No, okay. No, no, your hand down, his hand up. His hand, okay, right there, that's great. Right there, that's great. Perfect, bring your hand down on his, that's it. Go like this. Okay, here we go. That's not in the picture anyway. There we go, perfect. Nice smiles. Okay, just like that. One more, just like that, go, yeah! yeah. Look, to, look towards each other. <laughs> look toward me. Okay, everybody look that way. Look toward me. Close your eyes, look down, just, just look down the floor. Well, everybody look towards me. Ready? That's great, right there. Look up towards your mom. Okay, look towards your mom. Look toward me. Nice smiles! I can't see ya. <laughs> hug, hug, like this. Wrap your arms around each other. Okay, right there. That's great. That's great. Perfect. More. Hold on. Okay, we're done. Huh? We got some great ones. Aren't they great? Have a seat. So good. You look beautiful. Oh, aren't you sweet? But you are beautiful. Uh, I'm, old. <laughs> uh, I'm old too, but yeah. I'm old and beautiful. <laughs> you guys can come over here. People come in, they love having their, the pictures that you create for them. Uh, your staff goes way out of their way to make sure that everybody's happy. You run a kind of a loose ship around yeah. here, which works to your benefit. Well, uh, I find uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, Mark, right after the photo session, you kind of like back away. Well, 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 during the photo session, I give out all my energy. I give everything I have during that time. And I'm telling you, it's an emotional, an emotional break from it. And then I walk over there, people say, can you give me a idea well and Enrique is pretty good at picking out the ones that I, he knows I would like so he picks them out and then he says Mark what do you think what do you, I like that one can, can you do that and when we're shooting sometimes I go hey make the background a little lighter make it a little darker but after a while we've been working together for like I think four years uh you get to work a, a rhythm just Val just started here but she's getting the rhythm now and we I wanted to, them to get in here and get their prints to get out of here. You know what's amazing is that you have some, some pretty high-end equipment here that can be easily interpreted as difficult or complex to work with. However, you have a drop-dead simple workflow and the speed in which you're able to shoot, process, print, get the folks out of here, and move on to the next shoot is really pretty impressive. You know, I try to work as fast as possible, and if I miss it the first time, I'll do, it, I'll do the same pattern again till, till they hit it again. Right. And when that last family came in, you know, they, 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 they gave it to me a bunch of times. It just depends on what they want. I mean, out of that photo session, I would have picked something differently than the one they picked with all their three heads tight. But that's what they wanted. They're the client. That's, you know. And she walked in thinking she'd be spending $200, and she landed up spending 800 at the end. Right. And you didn't even have to sell a thing. Yeah, it just yeah, happened. 200 here, 100 there, 100 there. Just like McDonald's. <laughs> Do you want a large Coke with that? <laughs> so this is a card trick that David Copperfield showed me. All right. 
So you got a deck of cards, 52 cards. You, you go like this, you can tell what person to stop. Stay all the stop. Okay. Okay, stop. Pick that card. Okay. Look at it. Can I show the camera? Yes. Okay. Yep. Put it back in. Yes, sir. Okay, now watch this. Okay. I'll put close the deck. Okay. Where the deck? Where did it go? Top or the bottom? Bottom. Wow, that's it. That's the trick. Very nice, Mark. Very nice. Fast, fast. Can, can you make an elephant disappear? You know, if I had an elephant here, <laughs> I could. <laughs> I have a friend that keeps calling me up and he says, Mark, I'm coming over in an hour with my pet elephant. Can you shoot it? And I said, well, you know, I don't think my wood floors are able to handle it. <laughs> but we can do it in the backyard. But we got to get it through the gate. And he said, make sure you bring a shovel. <laughs> Mark, thanks. It's been a pleasure. No blast. problem. Thanks it's for coming. Blast. It's been a blast. talk now about the table shot. My favorite shot. You just need a soft box, a fill board, a background, and a table and a chair. It's simple. Last year I did 9,800 of these photos. They were very successful simply because when subjects walk in, they feel secure sitting at the table. They feel like they're at home. They sit down at the chair, they put their arms on the table, they look down at their hands, they look up at the camera, you just keep moving them back and forth around the table. It's a really comfortable situation. And that's what you want your subjects to be, comfortable. Here's an example of the photograph we're going to create for you today. It's a photograph of my friend Jovanka. She's a model, mother, but she's going to be wearing a beautiful classic outfit. Just black, black, just really simple. So all you need is a few components to do this photograph. We need a background a cutter card, a soft box, a fill card, a camera of course, a meter, and a table. This is the corner shot. It's a shot that came from when I used to live on Willow Street in Chicago. I had this little apartment with this little corner in the apartment with a window on the right hand side. I used to have people come to my studio and pose them in the corner. It was really nice because they could naturally feel comfortable in the corner and move around and do different things. Well, here's some pictures of my friend Wesley Kimmel, the artist, and you can see what I did. What's really good about the corner shot is that it takes up very little space in your studio. The most important part about the corner shot is the corner. And we're in the corner right now, and the corner is made of canvas with two by four backing. It's very simple. And when you walk out of the corner, you just collapse it right to the wall. It doesn't take a lot of space up in your studio. It's great. But stretched on this is not muslin, it's canvas. It's put down on here and nailed across. Then I had a background painter come in and paint it with a little texture. I tried to get it to match the walls of like this old apartment. And the walls were kind of like aging. So I wanted it kind of like a little mold on there, a little bit of dark to light. So if you look at it, you'll see little sections of light, little sections of dark. Components for the corner shot are pretty simple. We got the corner, we got the camera, we got the octobank. I use a big light for this and overhead on a boom. So it hits one wall to the other wall. And there you go. The distance between the camera and the corner. Well, I would say it's about 10 feet. And I'm using that 110 on the Mamaya, which makes it just kind of a really clean and simple shot. The distance between the subject and the light is about five feet. And the light should be crammed in between the corner. So it's just touching edge to edge. And the subject should be able to look up at it and look down at it and be lit from every direction. Should be a kind of like a flat but little contrasty light. So why don't you try it? Try it in your studio. 
build yourself a corner. I think it'll be exciting. You'll get some different photographs with some different angles. You got so much to choose from. The corner is a great concept, a great building block. You can build anything in it. It's like a little miniature room that you can build your own world. So try it. So when you have a leaf back file, you have them popping up on the screen black and white. So you're set in leafs black and white mode. Correct. Which means you could easily, if you wanted to, through the leaf software, flip them over to color. Yes. Do people ever ask when they're watching you do a black and white session here if they can see them in color? Yes, it's rarely that they do that. People that come into the studio, they usually come because Mark shoots mostly black and white. And then there are some cases that people just want a color image, but it's very rare. So when you shoot the Canon system, mm -hmm. are you tethering those images to your computer in black and white or in color? I'm shooting them in black and white. Uh, however, there's a raw file. You could just do whatever you want with that image. But if most people don't see a color image, they don't even ask for it because they know black and, white, black and white is what Mark does. Yes. I mean, if they just see a black and white, they'll stick to that. And the, I mean, you see the all images around the studio and they're mostly 90% of them are black and white. So what software do you use to convert that raw leaf file to a file that you can print on your inkjet printer? Well, the software that comes with the camera, yeah. Leaf Capture, yeah. and that's what we use to process um, our, our raw files from our, our leaf back. It does take about a minute and a half, depending on your machine that you use, your tower. Uh, the speed might vary from a minute to a minute and a half, two minutes, depending on actually the size of the file. Mm -hmm. And that software works only with Macintosh, right? No yeah. PC. And that's, yeah, that only works for, with Macintosh. That's the reason we have uh, Macintosh here. But on the Canon side, you're capturing those files with Capture One. Capture One. And Capture One is both platforms. It's Mac and PC. PC, correct. And do you actually convert from the raw file to black and white using Capture One for yes, your I do. Canon files? Correct. Because that's, I mean, we just try to keep the programs to what you know they come in, other than using. And some people, other people are just used to using other programs, and they don't offer you or give you the the quality that should be there. If you have a person, say, has a, an unusual scar on their forehead, yeah, and they come in and you sense that they're sensitive about it, do you go ahead and ask them if they want it retouched? Yes, people, I. I like gently ask them if they would like to get retouched. Some people who don't really like the idea of them pretending to be, you know, some other fake person that they're not. But, you know, some people, you know, are like, yeah, you just do it to a minimal where there's doesn't extend like over plastic surgery. <laughs> okay, should we talk anymore? Okay, now I want you to put your arms and hold each other's arm. That's that you got right there, don't move heads together. Okay, get your bang out of your eye, Morgan. Take a step toward me as close as you can get. Okay, right there, that's great. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's great, you two. Okay, don't move. That's it. That's what it looks like. Hold on. That's too bright. The backlight's way too bright, too. Maybe the camera's, I moved the f-stop or so. Okay, Morgan, get your, okay, that's better. That's it. Don't move. Okay, don't move. Put your arm behind your mother. That's it. Right there, you go, right there. Perfect, don't move. Turn this way, both of you, a little bit. There we go, perfect. Bring your head this way. There we go, perfect. Don't move. Tell me when. Okay, both of you, don't move. Get your, bring out of your eye, Morgan. Okay, right there, that's great. No smile on this one, both of you turn your head that way. Okay, this is it. Okay, look down the floor. Okay, this is that. I want you to uh, put your uh, hands uh, around each other's waist. Okay, there we go, there we go. Now turn toward me. Turn toward me, turn your bodies toward me. Okay, right there, that's great. Right there, perfect. Don't move, heads together. Morgan, turn, okay, that's great, right? Morgan, get your hair out of your eye. I'll turn your head this way, Morgan. Okay, that's great, right there, heads together. Okay, right there. Don't move. Okay, just that. No smiles. No smiles. That's it. That's come. No, you can go back. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Now head towards her, Morgan. 
Okay, that's it. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. That's the camera's in my picture. Thank you. Okay, just a that. Don't move. Perfect. Just a that. They smiled, both of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, hug, hug, hug. Hold on. Okay, now, Morgan, turn this way. Okay, now put your after arm around Morgan. That's it, right there. Turn towards me, Morgan. Okay, that's great, right there. Perfect. Morgan, get your hair out of your eyes. Morgan, hold your mother's hands. There we go, perfect. That's both smile. That's great. Again, to the that, that's perfect. Again, go, yeah! Yeah! How much power do you actually run flash power through that quadra when you're shooting your typical portrait shot? Um, we're probably running about 700 watt seconds. Um, just just depends on the on the f-stop that we're working and the ISO that we're working. As opposed, to when we're shooting with our leaf, it's 50 ISO. When we're shooting with the uh, 5D, it's 100 ISO. So, so there, it, it varies depending on the power. So if you had a thousand watt pack, you'd be okay. you will be more than enough. Okay. I, oh, that's great. That's it. Oh, you put both of your hands like this forward and, and lean over this way. Okay, and put your head that way a little bit. That's it. That's great. Perfect. That's great. Perfect. Don't move. Okay. Don't move. Perfect. That's it. Hold on. I got. See, there's a little crease in front of her arm of the background. No, 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 no. On the, on the, on, on there. Okay, here we go. Same thing. That's great. Perfect. Look right here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. The backlight didn't go off. Of course, we can keep it like that. Oh, too big on. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Don't move. Perfect. That's great. Perfect. Turn your head straight toward me. Okay, put both hands just like this. Okay, head down, head down. Oh, that's great, right there. Get your bangs out of your eyes. Okay, that's on that. That's great, right there. Now bring your hands over towards this way. Okay, that's right. And head down that way. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Just like that. Perfect. Across, okay, don't move. Across your arms in front of you. Okay, just like that. Look down. That's great. Just like that. Look towards me with your eyes. A little smile. Go, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it, go, yeah. Go, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Take your hair out of your eyes. Okay, there we go. That's great, perfect, that's great. Look straight toward me. Bring your hands this way. What happened, Enrique? I don't know why you had that wand on it, but whatever. Okay, here we go. Well done. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, ready? All right. Look at me. Okay, just that way. You lean forward and just like that. Okay, turn your head down towards that way. Yeah, that's it. Now look at me. That's great. Right there. Perfect. Don't move. Right there. Don't move. Turn your head toward me now. Right there. That's great. A little smile. Turn your head that way, get your hair out of your eye. Okay, just do that. That's it. Don't, no smile on this one, just do that. Okay, just do that. Head down a little bit. Okay, that's great. Right there. Don't move. Bring your hand down now. Right there. Perfect. Don't move. One more, just do that. A little smile. You're done. How do you package that print so it doesn't get damaged when they leave? Uh, we have acetate sheets. And then we just fold them in there and, and then just give it some. And they really are cardable. Are you worried about the print not drying properly? 
Uh, in the acetate, I mean, we just tell them, you know, as you can see, as you get home, don't get a frame, but they, they'll, they'll leave with the print right away. And you tell them, let it dry for a couple days before yes. you put it behind glass? Correct. Terrific. The studio strobes that you have in the studio here. Correct. There's a mishmash of all kinds of brands and whatever. Yes. It's crystal clear that Mark likes the big, soft light sources from Allen Chrome. Yes. The square one that you're using today, which one is that? That's the uh, uh, Quadra, I believe. Um, and it's uh, made by Allen Chrome. However, we're not shooting Allen Chrome. We're not using the uh, strobes made by Allen Chrome. Yeah, it looks like a Speedatron we pack. We use the Speedatron there. pack because uh, we've had these things here for quite a bit and they're a workhorse. So they get beating and and they're still continue. So you've had the Allen Chrome Quadra modified so yes. it'll accept a Speedatron head? Yeah, the bracket for the, where you adapt the strobe, mm -hmm. it's been modified just so it fits one of these. I believe they have them so you could modify probably whatever kind of light source that you're using, mm -hmm. power pack. So the Quadra is the little brother, if you will, to the Octa, Correct. which is six foot and it's octagonal in shape. Why doesn't Mark use the Octa? Because I know he, I know he does. Yes. Why doesn't he use it in the studio here? Well, we use the Quadra mostly for our tabletop shots just because it's smaller as opposed to the Quadra, it's a lot bigger. Uh, the Quadra spills less light. Uh, if, you want to, if you don't want the background to be overlit, and this is just fits better in the table. We do use a quad drop and we use it for mostly our corner shots. I see in this shot, uh, the series we did today, you've got a beautiful painted background and a large, looks like a beauty dish with a sock on the front mm -hmm. of it, also Speedatron. Correct. That's on a, uh, a looks boom. like a 10 foot boom. Correct. So that light is there for background work only? Yes, it just throws, throws sometimes we just put a minor little spill in the back just to give it a little highlight mm -hmm. um, and that's all there is for it. And two lights would be our most that we ever use. So when you have seven people wide mm -hmm. in a rather tight studio here, Correct. you're just gonna take that five foot quadra bank and pull it back so that it covers? Well, in that scenario, we would choose uh, to use the Octa. Because it's a little bit. It's a little bit bigger. It's a bigger size uh, light source. Mm -hmm. And we would stay away from shooting the, the quadra. And I gotta tell you, you are a master of adjusting the fill light with those large fill boards. <laughs> what are those things? Uh, those are just foam cords, and um, you could just make them out of corrugated um, whiteboard. I mean, or just any foam cord that you have. You could either just anything that's white, that's lightweight. You could just make a fill light out of it, and they're they just, work wonderful. They're four foot by eight foot wide. Correct. It's a sheet, and then you tape them together with a book hinge, just using gaffer's tape. That's right. And, and then, you flop them around the studio and create that really soft, gorgeous yeah, fill. And it light. just fills in just enough. And then you can just move them back or forth depending on how much fill we want to put in our subject. Now, I notice you have four by eight foot black foam core panels. Yes, what are those we for? Do. Those are to cut the light for the background. If you see a lot of Mark's shots, they fade from a darker just to a bright, you know, graded. Uh, background on the background and then we just cut the light so it doesn't spill it all to the back and then it just fades it away just beautifully so, so if we if we tried to define the table shot mm -hmm. when a viewer looks at that print you've got your subject lit from the left, left to the right correct but the background appears to be lit from the right to the left because yes. it goes from dark to bright where the subject goes from bright to dark and that's really done with only one light. You're not, Correct. You're not running a backlight. What you're doing no. is you're just cutting off. Yes. And the as the, the light's hitting, the light hits our subject perfectly, whatever spills goes to the back. And whatever, the, we use the cutter car just to block some of that light. And it just creates that uh, gradation from and, dark. And you just move bright. those lights around from set to set to set. Yes. You put a little kid on the table, you put a chair, or you have them sit up there, and off you go. Yes. It couldn't get any much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, say somebody calls two months after their photo session mm -hmm. and they want to reprint. Do you have the file number on the back of the photograph for them to reorder? No, what we do is since I only process the images that they order, it's really easy for me to track down. I keep even their orders under, under file. I have all the raw uh, images and I have the files processed. 
So therefore, it really, it's really minimal just to distinguish which file it is. I just ask them, you know, which one is it? Is it the one with, you know, the big smile, you know, looking down, very serious? And then I have that image there. So the images that we saw from the photo sessions today mm -hmm. are photo sessions that are maybe 10 minutes long. I mean, they're not very Correct. No, they're long. not. Uh, the number of files that are created are mm -hmm. unusually low. Yes, it's about 25 to 35 images. So you've got those raw files in a folder. Correct. Customer comes in and picks out one or two or three. Correct. Those three you process into a TIFF mm -hmm. file. You print whatever they want right away through image print to your inkjet printer. Yes. And then later, if they decide they want more prints, you can reprint them here. Yeah. I save the images that they order in that file, so therefore they call me back and know which, you know, which files they are. Because it's if it's twenty out of twenty-five, there's probably going to be four or five images that they order. That's remarkably simple. And then it's just there. Say a person calls and loves the shot you did of their dog, mm -hmm. and Fifi has to have a thirty by forty size picture in the living room. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that, knowing that that printer is only going to print 17 inches wide? Well, we don't print them here. Uh, we just send them out to, or we outsource them to other people, uh, one person that we have actually. And they just, they have bigger printers and they print them exactly the way we, we have printed here. So we you print. tell them if you want it tinted or not tinted? Yes. We actually just give them the file the way it should be printed and he knows what to do with it. And what about paper stocks? We keep the same paper stocks usually that we do. So if I came in and I bought an 8x10 from you today right. and it's printed on whatever paper you use yeah. and then I come back next month and say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to run for mayor and I need to have a 40 by 60 yes. you yeah. can order that up and it'll be on relatively the same look paper. Yes, it will be. Did you ever think about doing wide inkjet printing here, big prints? Uh, not really. No, it's just this is fine. Most of our customers just order a 17 inch wide image uh, and that's fine with most of it whatever we do and Mark does a lot of fine art printing also and that's where he gets his other prints done nice nice I know that when people walk in there and the lights where it is and the exposure where it's at it's gonna look great so what I have to do is get a great photo in that moment and that's what it's all about getting a great photo and it's about giving it to get it you got to give your energy to people. As uh, this guy said to me uh, today, he said, Mark, you know what? You really got me going. You, you got your energy shooting at me, and I got your, my energy shooting back, and everything just happened. And you, you see people do things when they sit, sit there that are natural, that, and then you just kind of like uh, duplicate it, clone it. And you just have them do that over and over again so they're comfortable with it. And then you have them fall into places, break apart, get together, break apart, get together. But the main thing is, is doing it fast and being sure of yourself and secure that you know, you know that you have a security in your head and your heart that it's going to be great. I control the photo session. It's kind of like my own manipulation. You got to manipulate them. You got to get them to where they're, where they're, they, they're, they're listening to you. It's kind of like a beat. Turn to the left. Turn to the right. Look up. Look down. Look sideways. Look at me. Look at my. Look at the camera. Okay. Say yes. You know. It's kind of like you have to keep the energy going. And then you start over again and build in the energy, build in the energy, build in the energy. Okay, right there. Oh, look out. 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 And then I know when I have it. The thing is, is that do I have what they want? So that's why I try to cover a few different ways. But most of my photo sessions of one person don't. I don't do more than like 15 to 20 frames. So, you know, you just have to give it, give it, give it, give it, and they'll give it back. Talking portraiture, e-products, auto editing, e-templates, educational videos for shooting smarter, not harder at the photochannel.pro. New vlog posts every day on hybrid photography and product recommendations too at hybridphoto.pro.